this was abandoned in such haste. Engine spin-up time almost complete. Total time, 5 minutes, 22 seconds. Ride on schedule. How are the Helium-3 valves holding, Nova? We double-checked the leakage concerns this morning before the launch. All signs green. Any changes to the calculation sequence from Voltaire? No changes since we uploaded the last figures yesterday. It's a clean shot from here to Jupiter. One day the computer will be on board the spaceship. Just imagine that! One miracle of science at a time, Canaveral. Counting down in five, four, three, okay, two, calibrated that thing. one. Canaveral, it's are you reading? To think that we're standing on the same planetary body where humankind first entered into space. Right now. Visual confirmation will be possible in well. <laughs> 32 minutes. Afraid the speed of light is on the slow side these days. <laughs> How does it feel to break the laws of physics, Canaveral? We're all pretty excited down here in NASA, I won't lie. Excited enough to tell me where you got the original data? Not in a million years.
The most likely way into the NASA facility would be via an elevator shaft taking us straight down. Hmm, hopefully the system is still in operation. after this. the gantry was in loading position. I wonder what prevented this particular colony ship from lifting off.
looks like it was some type of crew preparation area. Probably the last step before boarding. Hmm, it's definitely seen better days. Judith Tatien. The recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting rock samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Isa comes with two members of the military. Everything they have brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I have been trying to cozy up to Dr. Isa. Victor, to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little gray man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallization look. Dr. Judith Satin, I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I, I don't know how much I should say, but the periodic table just got thrown out the window.
there something wrong with the math? I think it's quite straightforward. That's not what I'm asking. We have no success extracting even a sample of material from the object. No explanation for the gravitational effects, no motion graph to explain its harmonic frequencies. I can't even establish a melting point. Judith. But you've had me building these prototype colliders for months. And now you want me to bump helium-3 into it based on this equation you've written on a goddamn napkin? They were clearly testing space habitat viability in this area. I have been testing it. It seems as if they we knew the inevitable was on the horizon. We keep slamming our heads against this wall, getting nothing. And you keep coming up with something new to try. Like, you know what's going to happen. Where are you getting your information, Victor? I'm sorry, Judith. I... Look, not here, okay? Somewhere off base. I'll tell you everything. But I'm not lying, okay? We're going to discover something important here. Not much left of this geology laboratory. Ironically, the surrounding rock appears to have sealed the fate of this part of the facility. something they don't want us to find.
we found one of Vasco's long-lost relatives. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to find out. Project Log, Dr. Victor Isa. We turned on the prototype today. The gravitational field around it began to fold as we long suspected. Complete reversal of gravitational pull was observed on dozens of loose objects around the lab. I'm setting up a meeting with the directors to propose a larger test. The prototype proves we don't need the original anymore, but further work is going to have to take place in space somewhere with abundant helium-3 and with a civilian partner. Someone with access to large-scale manufacturing resources and computational equipment. Engineering gravitational folds pulling the far side of the solar system closer to us? It's all going to be possible. Project Lock, Dr. Judith Tatien. I watched the Gravjet test from the moon today. It was the first time we were able to talk to the team at Nova Galactic directly. So many things were under wraps before, but now everyone wants all the publicity they can get. I'm already seeing proposals for manufacturing androids of drives, expeditions to Alpha Centauri and beyond. It's also overwhelming and worrying. It could take years. 
decades before we know what all these side effects of operating a crab to life can be. But no one wants to hear that right now. Like a bunch of pioneers racing towards the edges of the frontier without knowing about the grizzly bears in the mountains. If there's a way to access the deeper sections of this storage area, I'm certain we'll find it. I never actually got to visit your labs, back when we were working on the Grav Drive projects. Seems like ancient history now. Only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Now Project Demeter. 
You want our help manufacturing scanners to better track these new meteorological patterns we've seen. Our guess is that the poles might be naturally shifting, causing some gravitational fluctuations that are throwing off our old models. Why do you need the scanning tolerances to be so small? What are you trying to find? I just want to be sure. It's, it's not like we're doing much these days anyway. The glory days are over. Why not give ourselves a challenge before they write us off in the history books?
Do you understand now why I asked you to come here? The artifacts unlocked the secret of interstellar travel. At the cost of Earth. An easy trade, honestly. Why have one world when you can have all the settled systems? Every grav drive in the settled systems was built on technology that came from an artifact that was discovered on Mars. But these early drives shook the gravity field surrounding Earth. Eventually, the atmosphere started to slowly sputter away into space. That is why Earth is uninhabitable. The artifact gave the scientists a greater understanding of time and space, but not the wisdom to see where that would lead. The settled systems wouldn't exist without the artifacts, in other words. We owe what happened here in NASA a great debt. Don't you see? The power of the artifact forced humanity to the stars. They didn't get to make a choice. How many would have chosen Earth? What gave Victor Isa the right to choose for them? You see the hypocrisy in what the Emissary is saying, right? They don't want to rob people of their free will, but then they steal the artifacts for themselves. In the wrong hands, the power of the artifacts can make anyone a tyrant. That is why we watch over them. The only thing you are watching out for is yourself. Sari and I may have our differences, but you do not want to give us a common enemy. For once, he is right. Don't do this. We can collect the final pieces together. Well, look at that. The emissary just became my new best friend. You've made your choice. When you're ready, the Hunter and I will be at the Buried Temple. That's where we'll settle things. Meaning, we'll kill you. But hey, at least we'll wait. The final round doesn't start until there's only one artifact left to gather. And if I'm not mistaken, Constellation has one or two to go. Thank <laughs> you.